In all of the previous graphs you've been looking at, um, we've been looking at the board as a team or as a group, not really looking at what it does in terms of its role. This particular graph tries to address this point. And what you can see here is a somewhat more complicated graph, but hopefully it's easily interpreted. Just as with the other ones, uh, the other graphs, there are bars involved and there is a minimum, maximum and midpoint. But in this particular series, each uh, construct or topic, here the topics are strategy, risk and compliance, governance, management, uh, oversight and management of the chief executive and access to resources. Each of them has two graphs, a darker set and a lighter set. Why two graphs? Well, when we started to develop this tool, and this is a tool that has been validated in previous studies, we're still validating it further, but we're quite comfortable with this particular instrument and that it is valid. Um, in, when we started doing this work, we found out that it was very difficult for people to uh, differentiate between importance of a particular role and how they're going at it. So what they should be doing versus how they are going, etc. So what we did was develop a method where we asked two questions. We asked, how important is this role? And we also asked, how well are we doing? The lighter graphs, the lighter bars here, these ones, okay, this series of lighter ones are how important we think this particular role is. The darker ones tell us how we think we're going. And what this gives us is a snapshot about how our board or management committee um, is performing across the series of roles with respect to how well we think we should report, be reporting. And I'm sure you can look at this and see a great deal of uh, variation. We can see um, a much wider diversity of views in this oversight and management of the chief executive about how we're going. I mean, the board should really have a discussion there when we see such vast differences in scores. We see perhaps a tighter uh, response here around strategy than what we do in this oversight role. We also see a bit tighter here around governance, but look at the, the larger gap between the role in governance than what we do in strategy, etc. And in terms of risk and compliance, we actually see a bit of an overlap. So that's probably the closest that we perceive of ourselves to doing as well as what we need to. So there's a great deal of information that can be learned uh, from this particular graph and interpreted. I should stress also that this is perception. So it may be that people think they know what to do, but don't. So it's not a foolproof guide, but it does provide us some hints of where our biggest gaps lie, for, here, for instance, here in governance, and it does provide us uh, an idea about where our greatest disparity of views are for here, our role with the chief executive. The second graph that we actually have, which is worth looking at, is this one of board control. It's how the board gets involved really around controlling and contributing to the organisation. We have two ideas here. One is that we work with management in collaborative strategising. And the second is that we have formal procedures, etc. Uh, when looking at this one, bear in mind that collaborative or working with management, the higher this one is, we know that that correlates with perceptions of performance, both from management and from board members themselves or management committee members themselves. So what I'd be really looking for here is ways to raise this. When this is a bit low or a bit spread like here, I think that the board could have a discussion about how it's actually going in terms of its strategy processes. So there we have it, some insights into how the board is performing its overall roles.